my late husband was remarkably like my father in character. Uh, he was also an extraordinarily giving man. And his awareness of human relations was spectacular. In fact, I, 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 I want to boast for a second because I played a minor role in this. And that is, we did something that I don't think, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think any other head of a Fortune 500 size company did what Frank and I did, which is right at the beginning of our marriage, I said, I think we should entertain everybody in our home for dinner who works for the company. And he said, no, there's 16,000 people, which, were, which is how many it was at the time. And I kind of pretended that I didn't understand that he was saying no. And I said, I think we ought to have them 100 at a time. No, that's way too many. And you know, I, I plunge on again as if I'm not getting that he's saying no. And I say, I think we should start in six weeks. I bet we could do it in six weeks. No, that's way too soon. But, <laughs> but he eventually embraced the idea because it was a way of showing the people who worked with him how important they were. And three times a month for almost 17 years, we would have groups of people and would have, would have them, people who would know each other, who would work in the same department so that they'd feel comfortable being in the big boss's home. And he'd, he'd, or we would invite them like the veterinarians or the truckers or the accountants or the secretaries or administrative assistants, would invite them in groups. And here's the part that, that I would be really surprised if there are many other heads of Fortune 500 size companies would do. At these dinners, they were, uh, there were buffets and Frank would stand behind the buffet table and he would serve his employees, he'd wait on them. Is that not cool? Is that there not a go. great, it's a way of communicating. So you were able to find somebody as awesome as your dad. That's, that's, that's rare. Right. Yeah. Not only was he ended up being as successful, uh, but, you know, just from a, as you said, from a six, a real definition of success on what you give to others and, and versus take. I mean, ah, oh, that's beautiful. That's and that's know, so awesome. I know that it meant a lot to the employees, partly because, you know, at the end of the evening, Frank would stand up in front of 100 people who worked for him. You know, his name is on their checks, but but his approach was humility as if you know, we're all on the same team and I value you. And he'd invite people to ask him questions about what was going on in the company. So, and I think you feel more engagement with the company if, if the head of the company is telling you in all honesty and transparency, you know, here are our problems and they're huge and here's what's gone wonderfully. And so you're, you're sort of more into it if in the boss's home, he's told you what's right. going on. And he'd always end the evenings in, you know, in different words, but the, it would be to, in the effect Oh, I know the company wouldn't be what it is today without each of you. Thank you. Well, again, like I started when you started talking about your dad, you know, it's so important. People need to hear this. And, 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 and it's not a coincidence that both of those gentlemen, both your dad, the founder of Sheridan and uh, the founder of, of Purdue Chicken, Frank Purdue, you know, had such phenomenal success because they got, just like I read all those years ago in that book, they got it early on. It's about making other people feel special, may, uh, um, giving back to others and, and working with them and making it feel like we're all on the same team, we're here together. And if only there could be more of that in the world, right? 